Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi man wala. Jazakallah khair. Brother Ibrahim, for the introduction as usual and for the summary from the previous uh, lectures. We today, inshallah, we continue with the subject of Tawheed. Very important subject, very, very important subject. And it's, it's really the, the difference between entering Jannah and entering Nar wa <clears throat> um, uh, So uh, we are going to continue. Let me share my window. Uh, do you see the window, brothers and sisters? Yes, yes. Pretty clear. No. And inshallah. So we continue today with the third category of Tawheed, Tawheed al-Asma' wa sifat uh, Tawheed al-Asma' wa sifat is to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes that either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in Sahih Hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-A'raf, he says, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا And to Allah, it belongs the most beautiful names. Al-Asma'u al-Husna, the most beautiful names. Then when you make dua, you call upon Allah with those names, right? Uh, and leave the company of those who deny his names, they will be punished for what they used to do. Also, we know uh, in Surah Al-Hash, at the end of Surah Al-Hash, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاللَّهُ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا هُوَ عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ هُوَ الرَّحْمَانُ الرَّحِيمُ وَاللَّهُ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا هُوَ الْمَلِكُ الْقُدُّوسُ السَّلَامُ الْمُؤْمِنُ الْمُهَيْمِنُ الْعَزِيزُ الْجَبَّارُ الْمُتَكَبِّرُ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ عَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ وَاللَّهُ الْخَالِقُ الْبَارِئُ الْمُصَوِّرُ لَهُ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this, uh, in these verses, lists a lot of uh, his names uh, that we, uh, we, 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 we have to understand, we have to follow, and we have to uh, live with and there's another hadith uh, <laughs> probably most of us know about the Prophet Sallallahu is narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu in Sahih Bukhari Allah from Muhammad Sallallahu says inna lillahi tis'atan wa tis'ina isma mi'atan illa wahida man ahsaha dakhil al -jan. to Allah there is absolutely surely 99 names whoever ahsaha uh, <coughs> whoever ahsaha whoever knows it will enter Jannah ahsaha meaning knows it knows the names understand the names and live by the names in our life live by the names in our lives and also make dua by them when you make dua you can say allah ya rabb ya rahman ya rahim ya quddus ya salam ya muhammad ya aziz jabbar and so on any of the names inshallah you can use and if you understand their names uh, his names then you can actually use them in the different situation as it applies now question does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you ask people uh, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or Muslims has only 99 names? Most people will say, yes, he has 99 names because the hadith said that. Correct. But, the, but there's also another hadith that Prophet Muhammad uh, taught us this dua, that this dua, whoever <clears throat> say it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace his hardship uh, and will replace his sadness with, with, with joy and happiness. The Prophet says, Maqala abdun qat idha asabahu hamun aw hazan. When a man befalls him uh, hardship or sadness or worries, whatever he say, Allahumma inni abduk ibn abduk ibn amatik. Oh Allah, I am your slave. I'm the son of your slave, uh, your, your male slave, meaning my father. I'm the son of your female slave, meaning my mother. Nasiyati biyadik madim fi hukmi. Right? I, you know, my, uh, my life is in your hand. Your judgment will happen. Adlum fi qada'ik. And you are just in your, your, uh, in your in your, in all your decisions as aluka bi kulli ismin lak i ask you with every name who alaka samaita bi nafsi i ask you with, with every name that you called yourself with aw anzaltahu fi kitab or that you give us in your book aw allamtahu ahadan min khalqi or you taught somebody from your creation aw sta'tharta bihi fi ilm al ghaybi andi or you kept it to yourself in the ghayb in the unknown an taj'al qur'an rabi'a qalbi wa nur sadri you make the Quran the spring of my my heart, the light of my of my uh, sight. 
uh, and removal of my sadness and my worries. The point of to take from this hadith is that piece which says, uh, which says, "Awistatharta bihi fi ilm al ghaybi inda," or you kept to yourself, which tells us that, um, which tells us that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala kept some names to Himself. And this hadith tells us that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has more than ninety nine names not only the 99 names we know about. So is there a contradiction between this hadith, Allah has 99 names, and this hadith that says if you, and every name that you did not tell us about that you get for, for yourself? No, there's no contradictions. And uh, this is where it goes to ilm al-hadith, and when we study the hadith, we study uh, all the hadith, first of all, to make sure that they're sahih or not, and both these hadith are sahih, both of them are sahih, uh, and both of them actually are in, uh, in Bukhari. Um, and so, so how do we uh, how do we combine these two hadith? Basically, it means that whoever learned the ninety nine names that we know about, that we know about, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Al Malik, Al Qudus, Al Salam, Al Mu'min, Al Muhammad, Al Aziz, Al Jabbar, Al Kabir, etc. Whoever knows these names and and learn them, inshallah, will enter Jannah with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's permission. But the second hadith tells us that. There's also more names to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that no one know except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only, right? So no one know the exact total number of names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has more than 99 names, subhanAllah. The application of the first hadith uh, about learning the 99 names and learning uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names. So this man uh, did happen in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. This man, when he used to lead the salah, among his people, he will always start, he will all read Fatiha, and after Fatiha, he will read Al-Ikhlas. And then after Ikhlas, he will read any other surah. And he does that every time there is a Fatiha and then some other surah. Fatiha and then Al-Ikhlas and then something else. So the people ask him, don't do that. Can you keep it to just one surah? The Imam said, no. When the people told the Prophet ﷺ about that, he asked that man, why do you do that? And the man who is the Imam, the local Imam for his people, he said, I love that surah, Surah Al-Ikhlas. So the Prophet said, uh, Your love for this surah will enter you into Jannah. Your love for this surah entered you into Jannah. Of course, he loved the surah because of the meaning of the surah. It's beautiful. It's very powerful. There's nothing else, no one else that have that kind of uh, attributes some of the names quickly we were not gonna try to attempt to 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 learn them all but just to appreciate and to to appreciate the, the learning of the names is a rub right everybody say oh, Allah ya Rabb, ya Rabb, ya Rabb, right uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a rub he's the one that guides and cares for all his slaves he's he's the one that manage all the affairs every affair all the affairs in this universe and he's the one that gives all kind of blessings in a specific sense he cares and guides for his devoted slaves right by reforming and setting straight their hearts and souls and attitude for these reasons many of our dua when we start oh allah you know we say ya allah ya rabbi ya karim and then we can make any other name because we are asking him for this specific kind of care allah subhanahu wa ta'ala name is allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah refers to the one who's adored who's worship the one who has the attributes of divinity nobody else has that attributes no the angels not the prophets no prophet muhammad none only allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the attributes of divinity and the who the one whom all his creation is enslaved we are all slaves to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only the humans also the jinn the the sun the moon the universe everything in this universe is his slave right al-malik and al-malik they're very close to each other. Al Malik is the supreme. Al Malik is the possessor. To both of them, to to some degree, it means the one to whom all the total control belongs. Allah is the one who is described with these attributes of dominion and sovereignty, which are the qualities of might, pride, and control. Only Allah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is in absolute control of the creation. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the one who issues the commands and who rewards or punishes and this entire universe belongs to him this is the meaning of al-malik and al-malik al-wahid al-ahad also very close 
to each other. Al Wahid is the one, Al Ahad is the unique, right? And uh, uh, right, uh, he is the one who is uniquely and utterly and perfectly one. He has no partners in his uniqueness. His slaves must believe in his oneness in both belief, in word, and deed by recognizing that he is perfect, he is unique in everything, in everything, in his in his oneness, and by directing all kinds of worship towards him alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a summit. He is the self-sufficient master. He's the one to whom all of creation turns for all their needs. He's, uh, he is in and of himself absolutely perfect in his names, in his attributes. And he is the one that does not need anyone. Everyone needs him and he does not need anyone. The meaning of the salad, everyone needs him uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need anyone. He is al-alim, the all-knowing, al-khabir, the aware. He is the one whose knowledge encompasses everything, all things, whether either you can see it or you can't, whether it's secret, private, or open, public, whether, whether it's uh, everything that's invitable or impossible or possible in heaven or the earth, in the past, in the present, in the future, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge of it. Nothing is hidden from him. He is al-khabir. Al-Hakim is the wise. He's the one who has ultimate wisdom in his creation, in his commands. He is the one who gives wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءَ Allah is the one who gives wisdom. مَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خِيرًا كَثِيرًا And whoever is given wisdom, he is given so much goodness, abundant of goodness. Sometimes we see uh, someone who's a writer or someone who's a philosopher or someone who's a story narrator and we say, oh, mashallah, he's hakim. He has hikmah, he has wisdom. No, he's not. The hikmah, comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if that person is truly hakim, is truly wise, he would have found Allah. He would have believed in Allah. So when you see a Western guy who speak what it sounds like wisdom, but he's not a believer, he's not really wise at all because he did not discover Allah. He did not believe in Allah, right? He thinks that there's no God, astaghfirullah, or whatever his belief is that is not correct. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one uh, that created everything well he does not create anything in vain he doesn't just create for amusement he doesn't just create just because he does not create anything in vain everything has wisdom behind it and the wisdom the word wisdom al hikmah is to put things in its rightful place if you put something in its rightful place this is called wisdom right and give them the right uh, rightful status allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, described himself in many names and these are very close to each other, Ar-Rahman, the most gracious, Ar-Rahim, the most merciful, Al-Bar, the source of goodness, Al-Kareem, the most generous, Al-Jawad, the generous, Ar-Ra'uf, the compassionate, Al-Wahhab, the bestower who makes a gift of property. These names are very close to each other, but it means in general, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives mercy, gives goodness, gives generosity, right? And... Um, and the greater share of this mercy, goodness, and generosity goes towards the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-A'raf says, Qala adabi uthi, usibu, usibu bihim an asha. Uh, My punishment I will put or I will bring down to whoever I want. And my mercy embrace all things. Uh, I will write it, write what? The mercy to those who believe, uh, to those who fear uh, and pious, and they give zakah, and they believe in our verses, in our ayat. He is as Samir, the all hearing. He hears all voices in all different languages, no matter how many, no matter how varied, no matter where they are, when they call upon him, he hears all voices. He is Al Basir. Is the all-seeing. He can see, he can see anything, anytime, anywhere. He can see the black ant walking across the face of a black rock on the darkest night, as the Prophet ﷺ tell us in the hadith. A black ant walking on a black rock, walking in the in the darkest of nights, and Allah can see that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can see what's below the seven levels of the earth, what is above the seven heavens. He is the all-hearing and all-seeing. If you want more names, I give you a link here. 
you know, you can click on it and you can see uh, more of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names. Where is Allah? If you ask people, Muslims, where is Allah? Sometimes people will tell you Allah is everywhere. Astaghfirullah. Or sometimes I heard someone say Allah is inside me. Astaghfirullah. You know? Or I don't know, right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us we have to read, right? We have to read the Quran and we have to learn the hadith and the sunnah to know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us the answer very clearly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-A'raf, He says, Inna Rabbakum Allah. Your Lord is truly is Allah, alladhi khalaqa samawati wal arda fi sittati ayyam. He is the one that created the skies and the earth in six days, thumma stawa ala al-arsh. And then he rose above the throne, al-arsh, in a manner that only suits his majesty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Tunis says, Inna rabbakum Allah, same, same exact ayah actually, repeat, exactly Allah is your Lord who created the skies and the earth in six days and then he rose uh, 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 over the throne or the arsh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Fatir, he said, Ilayhi yas'adu al-kalimu al-tayyibu wal-amalu salihu yarfa'u. To him ascend, go up, right? Go up. All goodly words and the righteous deeds are raised. And when we when we in the salah we said what subhana rabbiya huh? al a'la subhana rabbiya al a'la is above right like allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us uh, but but he is he's he's above the arsh he's also with us with his abilities all the time because some people said wait a second brother in surah al hadid allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa huwa ma'akum ayna ma kuntum and he's with you wherever you are He's with you wherever you are. So Allah is with us, right? No. This means he is with us with his knowledge. Because if he was with us physically, then Allah would not say, Wallahu bima ta'maluna basir. And Allah knows what you do. He can see what you do. He see all the time what you do. If he didn't say that and he says, Wahu ma'akum ayna ma kuntum, maybe someone say, well, that means Allah is with us now, right? He's here physically, right? But Allah wants us to understand, and this is the importance of learning the Arabic, and this is the importance of learning the ayat and the hadith. That uh, that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us with his knowledge, not here with us. He is, he can hear what we say, he can see what we what, what we do, what we do, he knows what's in your heart, he knows everything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in another ayah in Surah in Surah Qaf. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا نُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ لَهِمْ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ Meaning, and we have created the human, we have created the man. And we knows what he whispers to himself. Even if you don't tell anyone and you just, between you and your own thoughts, Allah knows, right? وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ لَهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ And we are close to him. Of course, when Allah says man, it means mankind, man, woman, of course. You know, every, every, every mankind right and we are closer to him than his jugular vein jugular vein is this this is your jugular so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is closer to us than our vein now it's closer to us meaning allah is here no it means allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to us by knowledge he can know what you do uh, he will know what you do he will see what you do he will hear what you what what you say he knows even your thoughts even your own thoughts even your own feeling and your in your heart he knows allah subhanahu wa so and so we have to understand the, the 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 arabic for example there's a hadith from the prophet last uh, prophet muhammad sallallahu said uh Allah, from muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said um uh, that uh inna al-jannata aqrabu ila hadikum min ni'al min min shirakin alayh wa kadhalika an meaning heaven is closer to any one of you than that your shoelaces when you have a shoe that your shoelaces that you tie you use to tie your shoes allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clo uh, jannah is closer to any one of you closer than your own shoelaces and same as hellfire does that mean jannah is here right here right here next to us and hellfire is right next to us no it means there's many different meanings to the hadith but it means that we can attain jannah easily if we do certain things if we know our knowledge Unfortunately, we some people can also go to hell easily because of their ignorance of the religion, right? So we have to understand the 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 the, the language. 
So what we said so far is where is Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us he is above the arsh. He rose above the throne. He made istuwa on the throne. How is that possible? We don't. We don't question that. We don't ask that. We don't try to understand it, right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us that he is with us wherever we are with his knowledge, not physically, right? Allah knows what we do. Allah sees what we do. Allah hears everything we say. Allah knows even your, your thoughts, even your heart feelings, right? Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a face? Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in Surah Al-Rahman, Everything on this uh, will be destroyed, in this universe will be destroyed, and the face of your Lord, full of majesty and honor, will remain forever. The face of your Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah, He says, To Allah belongs the east and the west whatever you turn whatever uh, yourselves or your faces there is the face of allah he's the high above his throne in allah allah is all sufficient for his creatures and all knowing and there's a hadith from the prophet sallam, that it basically say when the people of jannah enter jannah you know, when when things are done people in jannah enter people in in hellfire enter allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell them uh you know did i you know do you want anything else he says no uh no no allah you 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 lighten our faces you enter us into jannah you save us from hellfire alhamdulillah we don't want anything then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hijab and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will unveil his face and and the prophet says they will be nothing more beloved nothing more beautiful nothing more amazing than the believers looking at allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's face so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in the quran and in the in the hadith through the prophet وسلم, that he has a face does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hands yes allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in surah sal qala ya iblis ma man'aka an tasjuda lima khalaqta lima khalaqtu bi yadi allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he prostrate when he asked the angels to prostrate, they all prostrated to Adam, except Iblis. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, Oh Iblis, what prevented you from prostrating yourself to the one I created with both my hands? And in Surah Al, uh, Al Ma'idah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وقالت اليهود يد الله مغلولة. And the Jews said, Allah's hand is tied up, meaning he does not give, he does not spend. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ghullat aidihim, but like curse them. So their hands are tied up and they are, are a curse for what they have uttered. But truly, his hands are widely outstretched and he spends from his bounty as he wills. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hands. Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has feet? Yes. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu in the hadith is in uh, in Sahih hadith in in Bukhari narrated by Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu an that the Prophet sallallahu says la tazalu jahannam wa taqulu hal min mazid jahannam on the day of judgment keep telling keep asking Allah is there more is there more is there more until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put his feet his foot on it but the qul qat qat and the hellfire will say okay, okay, okay enough 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 you know scared of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has feet. What about the ayah that said, well, someone said, wait a second. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Shura said, Laysa ka mitlihi shay, wa huwa sami'u al-basir. Nothing is like him. He's the one who hears everything. He's the one that sees everything. And in Surah Al-Ikhlas, we always read, Qul huwa Allah ahad, Allah samad, lam yalid wa lam yulid, wa lam yakun lahu kufuan ahad, and nothing is equal to him. Nothing is comparable to him. What about these ayats? Yeah. This ayat meaning we have to accept what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what the Prophet sallallahu told us about Allah, that he has face, he has hands, he has feet, and that he is above the, he is on his throne. But how is that possible? In what way? Is his hands like us? Is his face like us? Is his feet like, like us? We don't question that. We don't even go there. We don't even go there. Remember, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Isra, which is a good surah to read uh, on a daily basis, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, You have not, you human, have not been given of knowledge except little. 
you know, even you go to the moon, even you go to the the latest and furthest uh, uh, planet or, or in this universe, your knowledge, O mankind, will be always limited compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You've given a lot. So because of that, we cannot imagine how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's face look like or how his hand look like or how his feet look like. So we don't change it. We don't say, no, it's not really hand. It means generosity. No, you cannot say that. We do not interpret it differently. Oh, it's not a face. It's just his Allah's beauty. No, you cannot say that. We cannot reduce it when, you know, it's, no, 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 it's not really a face. No, it's not a feet. We cannot reject it. No, 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 no. Allah does not have a face. Allah does not have a feet, does not has, has uh, hands. We cannot say any of that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that about himself and we cannot imagine it hmm how does it look like is it like us we, we don't go there we just accept what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us we accept what the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam tell us about allah and we don't question how or what or make it less or change it or reduce it or reject it right so and this is not something new all the four madhabs abu hanifa malik uh, uh, ibn hanbal and Shafi'i, all of them said absolutely what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about himself. For example, Imam Abu Hanifa. Imam Abu Hanifa, and I quoted here the book, it's called Fitful Akbar, right? Uh, he said, Allah has a hand, has a face, and an essence as he eat, as he may he be exalted mentioned in the Quran. Whatever Allah may he be exalted has mentioned in the Quran of him or of his having face, hand, and essence, these are attributes of his which are which we affirm without discussing how it cannot be said that his hand is his, his power that's interpretation right or his hand is blessings nope that's interpretations because that is denying the attribute if allah said i have a hand he has hand and is the view of the qadaris and the mu'tazili there are groups such as the qadariya or al mu'tazila they said no 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 when say allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says hand it doesn't really mean hand it means blessing that's that's not correct and that's not what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned right his hand is a divine attribute and we do not discuss how how it is his wrath and his pleasure are divine attributes and we do not discuss how they are in imam tarmadi for example he also uh, after he narrated the hadith allah accepts the charity in allah and takes it in his right hand and takes it with his right hand in the in the Imam Tirmidhi book of Hadith, he says more than one of the scholars has spoken about this Hadith and similar reports that refer to divine attributes and the descent of the Lord to the lowest heaven every night. Right, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the other Hadith, uh, in Allah Taala yanzilu al sama al dunya fi kull fi kulli layla. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala descend to the uh, lowest of uh, the, the heavens every night and he was said is there anyone who's asking for forgiveness is there anyone who's asking for, for repentance right uh, so he said we affirm the reports concerning that and we believe in it but it cannot be imagined we cannot say hmm how does he go down how does Allah go down? we cannot ask that we believe it we accept it we don't question it we don't imagine it we don't change it right similar it was narrated and similar things was narrated by from Malik by Sufyan ibn, ibn Uyayna, by Abdullah ibn Mubarak, all of them are tabi'in, uh, that they said concerning this hadith, let it pass without discussing how, right? And you can see there are groups in Islam such as Jahmiya, they deny these reports completely, uh, uh, and like the Mu'tazila, like al ashariya they deny parts of the Asma wa Sifat, and that's a problem. And I, I give you here two books, uh, I'm sorry they are in Arabic, which, which, uh, I think some of you speak alhamdulillah yeah uh, and uh, if you are interested we can look for uh, these books hopefully in english um allah is also pleased allah can be pleased allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he also likes he tell us in surah al-najm and there are many angels in the heavens whose intercession, whose shafa'a will avail nothing except after Allah has given permission for whom he wills and for whom he is pleased with. Yarda. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with certain people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Surah Al-Baqarah, Inna Allah yuhibbu al-muhsineen. 
truly Allah loves the muhsineen, the people who are always do good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be angry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give a wrath. Allah, you know, when you read Al-Fatiha, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ, right? Not those, or not the way of those that earn your anger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry with them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ali Imran, أَفَمَنْ تَبِعَ رِضْوَانَ اللَّهِ كَمَنْ بَاءَ بِسَخَطٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَمَأْوَاهُ جَهَنَّمُ وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ Is that who follows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, the good pleasures of Allah, is like the one who draws, draws on himself the wrath of Allah, right? And this person, his eternal house is Jahannam, وَبِئْسَ al masir, and this is, um, you know, the worst destination. Um, Tawheed al-Asma wa sifat Daleels and proofs uh, that all the creation in this earth and in this universe and its diversity, its order in life, it's following its path in this life. This is proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's glory, abilities, knowledge, wisdom, will, right? Uh, uh, gifting, in'am, or beautification, ihsan, uh, removing harm, removing disasters from people, removing hardships, all proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and generosity, al-karam, and uh, jawd, uh, he's a jawad, giving or giver of goodness. The punishment that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done to the people of Ad or people of Thamud or, or people of Saleh or people of Nuh and so on, all are manifestation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's anger with them, right? And the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to the Sahaba and will give inshallah to the pious muttaqeen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them. Some of the groups, uh, and this is really not our subject here, but you just should know the name, al jahmiya you know, uh, they deny all of the names and attributes, astaghfirullah, al-mu'tazila, right? They call the names as just names without the true meaning and completely deny the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Asha'iriya or al-Asha'ira, al-Matridiya, uh, which huge part of them are in Egypt, unfortunately, my my original country of birth. They accept the names, they take some of the attributes and deny some, and they said, "Oh, nothing is like him." So they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't say anything about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, rose above the arsh. And then they make that wheel. They says, "Oh, face really." When Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala talk about face, talk about himself. When Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala talk about hand, talk about his favor. And this is not correct. You cannot interpret. The names whatever you want um yeah so uh, let's see yeah we can skip these right so answering those who denied allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the prophet ﷺ confirmed those names they are in the quran and the sunnah anybody who says no 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 they don't exist is not really that's an act of kufr so we have to be careful yeah some humans sometimes you can say this person is knowledgeable he's alim or this person is is uh, is uh, is uh, he's very he's very patient, right? Sabur or Halim. Uh, I'm sorry, Halim, right? Or uh, this person person is uh, uh, Rahim, right? Is uh, uh, has mercy, true. But the true Alim, Al Alim, is only Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The Al Halim is the all patient who shows his creation the the blessing or shower his creation with blessings, uh, both apparent and hidden. Is Al Halim, Al Alim, right? Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us about, for example, uh, Ibrahim, alim, and they give him the glad tidings of a son having knowledge, right? Or, حليم, a story about uh, Ismail, true, right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the true Samia, is the true Basir. So, yes, we can use sometimes some of those names, right? Uh, Brother Ibrahim, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's Rahim, he's merciful, he's a kind guy. But Ar-Rahim is the one that gives all sort of mercy, right, uh, to, to his creation is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, uh, right, and this goes on to all the different names. Uh, also, the, the one who does not have perfection and completeness in everything is not fit to be our Lord. Uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he told his father, oh, my father, why do you worship that who does not see? Who does not hear, right? And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Araf uh, tell us that uh, the, the people of Musa, when Musa went away, they took away the, the calf, you know, the cow, uh, it's a statue, and they worshiped them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Don't they see that this calf don't talk to them, don't guide them, right? Uh, also, to interpret, 
to interpret the attributes of Allah. For example, say the face is really his presence or the hand is his ability. There's no proof of that. Prophet Muhammad and the Sahaba did not do that. They did not come and say, oh, when Allah said, uh, you know, he has a face that, oh, it means something else. Or when he has a hand, it means something else, right? So, and interpreting the attributes of Allah, meaning that the Quran, we cannot understand it directly. We have to kind of interpret, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبْرُونَ Quran." Don't they not consider the Quran carefully? Then it will be unfair because we have to interpret something from the meaning that's not very clear from the meaning. That would be you know, against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that don't they consider, don't they think about, don't they understand the Quran. So we cannot interpret the meaning to mean something else, right? Because it's not the way it should be. And this is the the end of it. Uh, Ibrahim, back to you, brother. Okay, mashallah. Barakallah, that is one. <clears throat> A tremendous lesson that um, we should all understand and comprehend due to the fact that many Muslim uh, unfortunately fall into this categories that, that have the wrong understanding of it. Uh, just a short recap that Brother Amra has mentioned about um, that Allah's name is not limited to 99 and is explained explain as well in the hadith in the supplication, I will start that BHP on the way you index. That is, that the names that you kept for yourself in the knowledge of the unseen that is with you. So there's names that we don't know, we, that nobody knows except Allah. The brother also mentioned about that we believe, have faith in the name and of the attributes of Allah without denying it, without any rejection, without changing the meaning. <laughs> The thing that the scholar has emphasized not to do tactile, not to negate it, or to do tarif, changing the meaning, or tarif, asking about it, or imagining it about it, or to do tamfil, to see there's a similarity between the names or the attributes that Allah has with the attributes of His creation. Yeah, mashallah. Okay, inshallah, um, we'll take a question or two in this uh, session, inshallah. So for, feel free, uh, we'll check the inbox here if okay, probably just a question here. Okay, we haven't had any question yet in the inbox. And we do, as usual, usually we also ask the brother and the sister to directly ask the question here. So feel free to do so, mashallah. Okay, as usual, if there's no question, so we're gonna, um, that implies as well that the lesson has been conveyed in a clear manner, in a clear message, so they understand it. The brothers and sisters understand the lesson very well. So we'll probably ask questions. If you probably have a question for us, Brother Ambro, feel free to do so. Okay, super, Brother Brian, Zakalahe. Uh, I know you guys are hungry and uh, probably looking at the watch to break your fast. <laughs> Mashallah. Yeah, so, um, so we studied uh, Tawheed. We, we said to understand Tawheed, we will divide it into three parts. Tawheed al-Rububiyya, Tawheed al and Tawheed al It's very important uh, to know why we did that. We do that because it makes it easier to understand. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, you know, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Rabbil Alameen is Al-Rububiyya. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. This is Al-Uluhiyya. You know, who you worship, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How you worship it, according to how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described. Right? Qul wallahu ahad, Allahu samad. Right? This is Asma wa Sifat. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala names and attributes. So it's all over the place. Right, we can just discuss it generally, or we can just divide it so that we can um, we we can uh, understand the tawhid better. It doesn't mean astaghfirullah, Allah is three or anything like that. Absolutely not. And you have to be very careful. I know a lot of you go to halaqa or kajian, and sometimes the ustaz says, "Oh, the ilm tawhid is not important." 
And that's a big statement. If someone says ilm al-tawheed or the knowledge of tawheed is not important, let's just focus on salah. Let's just focus on how to worship Allah. Let's focus on dhikr and dua. Be careful because the, the tawheed is the most important thing. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he used to send the messengers out for, with, the, with the message of Islam outside of Mecca and Medina, he would tell them, alimum al-tawheed. Teach them tawheed. When they believe, then teach them salah. And when they perform a salah, then teach them zakah. So he gave us the order, tawheed, salah, zakah, right? So we cannot come today and say, you know, I have to just, just focus on salah, but tawheed is not important. Hey, tawheed, man, I, I believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. That's it. No, 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 it's not it. You know, so we have to understand that. Uh, and like Brother Ibrahim, mashallah, always uh, explained to us, you know, tawheed al is 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 understanding the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's actions, through his actions. He's the one that controls everything. He's the one that gives life. He's the one that takes life. He's the one that uh, you know, brings rain. He's the one that gives risk. Everything is controlled by him in this universe. He's the one that controls everything in this universe. And then and then Tawheedul. So that's Tawheedul Rubiyah, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his own actions. And then Tawheedul Al-Uluhiyah. Okay, we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a Rabb. We believe he's the Lord of the universe. Okay, what do we do now? We have to worship him alone. We cannot worship him with someone else. We cannot say, oh, Muhammad, yeah, Muhammad, cannot do that. Uh, Shia sometimes, they say, yeah, Ali, this is this is shirk. You don't call upon anybody. You don't call upon anybody. Okay? Uh, and so how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we have to follow, uh, only worship him, and we have to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be worshipped. And then al asma wa sifat the names of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala that he has told us about himself and the attributes of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so so that's it. And I hope you 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 got that. This is so important and you might not get it uh, day one. And be careful because it's very dangerous to say Allah is everywhere. Allah. No. Allah tells us he is istawa al arsh. He's istawa over the arsh. Right, all the madhab said we understand that, and we don't question it. We didn't say how he did that. We didn't say is that like us. We don't say uh, oh, no, 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 no. He didn't really do that. We don't reject it. You can't. You have to accept Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. If we don't, we are denying the Quran, and we are denying the Hadith, and that's a that's a, that's a problem. Yeah. So I hope inshallah, this inshallah, brother Ibrahim, uh, I think will be the last lecture, right? Yeah, for Ramadan. Yeah, for, inshallah, Ramadan. there's another lecture outside of Ramadan. Yeah, I will ask people if they're interested. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do it weekly. Uh, I don't see a lot of people coming, maybe once a month or something. Yeah, so, yeah we'll talk, inshallah. Inshallah, yeah. Well, alhamdulillah, that wraps it up for the series of lectures in Ramadan. I'm your host, Ibrahim. And before we end this, I would like to say, Taqabullahu minna wa minkum. Inshallah ta'ala, we'll celebrate together the Eid al-Fitr, uh, probably on Wednesday, or Wednesday probably, inshallah. So inshallah, we would like to say once again, Jazakumul Khairan for everyone has participated in this lesson, and also Jazakumul Khairan, we start Amroha given a very important lecture for uh, over four weeks now. And we would like to say also, if there's any error or mistake from me or anything that I said is wrong, I could say that is from me, myself. And it's every goodness that comes that is all from Allah. Alaikum salam. The meeting has ended. Thank you for joining. Goodbye.